Welcome back once again to the realm of Final Fantasy XIV. Today we're tackling something a little bit different as we've done the two regular dungeons added already. What we're tackling today is the new raid added. Alexander Midas. You may recall Alexander Gordius, which I've already done. Alexander Midas has us going up Alexander's other arm to once again reach its center. This will cover four individual encounters, and so we're going to start with the Fist of the Sun. He was getting a little bit long, but I suppose today is reset day. Why is it always one person? Get your crap together. I rather like how Midas 1 starts out the, much the same way Gordius 1 started out, running down an almost identical passage, and even through the same steam room you ran through. It's just in a different position because his arm is in a different position from his other arm. And of course we're going to meet the same thing we met in Gordius 1. Twofold. Just in, case, just in case you thought one Faust was too bad, now we get to fight two Fausts. The fight against both Fausts here is not actually a complicated one, but it is a strenuous one. Much like the fight with the previous Faust, which was simply the one Faust and ads showed up and you had to DPS him down as fast as possible. If you didn't kill him fast enough, you'd get overrun with adds and the damage that Faust was doing. Here, it's once again a DPS check. Both of these Fausts, which neither one does anything of terrible note. I mean, they may hit the tank for something hard as far as I know, but as far as a DPS is concerned, they don't do anything of terrible note. They just need to be grouped up and killed as fast as possible. If you've got a cooldown, use it. You have a very short time limit, and even now we're going to beat the time limit by a few seconds. You have until touchdown to kill both Fausts, or you will wipe, as Hummel Faust here will immediately use an attack that does damage based on um, the two Fausts remaining HP. If they're not dead, you'll likely just die. Hummelfaust himself, aside from perhaps a couple tank buster types move that he moves that he may or may not have, again doesn't do anything of terrible note. You just have to knock him down as fast as possible. The only attack that I can think of that is really worth noting is Pan how do you even pronounce that? Panzer Shrek? Something, something of the sort. I think that move does damage to everyone in the raid based on how much HP he has left. So it's kind of another DPS check, because you've got to get him down far enough that that attack doesn't kill you. Just punch real hard real fast, and both, or I should say all three of the Fausts, Shouldn't be that big a deal, and that'll take us to our first proper boss, Ratfink's Twinkle Dinks. What a name. Looking around the arena, you can see the four various needles with some kind of goo in them. These are going to be playing as our main mechanic for this fight, as Ratfink's here will be using them, or I should say you will be using them, to avoid a number of his attacks. Ratfinks himself will go back and forth between a smaller and a larger form. 
which again, apologies that I can't give a lot of information as to what exactly the tank is being hit with. I can only assume the larger form hits much harder. However, there are a few attacks that we as players will need to be aware of, and these will change over the course of the fight. The first of which is you'll see an arrow appear over top of someone's head. This person is about to get hit with an AoE that's going to put a rather large marker down on the floor, which you can see appearing right behind us. This will lay out a big green puddle of goo. Standing in that is unpleasant, and I would suggest not. I think it's just damage over time. So when you see that marker over your head, move. You have very little time to react. Now also, as I'm showing there, the other main gimmick of the fight, and this comes into the, into the play of the needles, is when you step on that device in the very middle with the small purple electrical circle surrounding it, it will zap you, and if you let it zap you long enough, which it's not long, just a very brief moment, the two opposite needles will actually spray out some goo onto the platform, as I'm going to do here. You step on that, and then you go stand in purple. When you see the boss using boost, readying boost. You need to stand in the middle, One all you only need one person to stand in the middle, and then you run over into that purple goo so you can be changed temporarily into a bird. This bird then will avoid his pounding the ground, which is the actual boost attack. Not turning into a bird will more likely than not get you killed. Adds do also periodically spawn over the course of the fight, though they don't spawn alongside many other mechanics, so it's merely a temporary distraction as you kill the glassy-eyed cobras here and another ad that we will see a bit later on before you get back to work on rat things. The other ad, as we can see having just spawned in the corner, is the gobbledygrover horrible looking thing. It's like a chimera with a, with a goblin's head. Again, nothing too fantastic. Kill it as soon as possible and then get back to work on rat things. There's also the large AoE, which I think only small rat thinks does, which electrifies everybody in the arena. Bombs away. Shock therapy, that's it. Bombs away is the other one to be aware of that you're actually going to need to use the needles to take care of. And you have to move very quickly when you see bombs away active. You need to stand in the middle of the arena to trigger the puddles of goo. That person is not moving despite having the arrow, and now we're all in a very tiny corner. But when Bombs Away goes off, someone needs to run over and stand in the middle of the arena as Cherry is doing which will trigger the two puddles of goo. She then stands in the red, which turns you into a gorilla. As the gorilla, you have the ability to pound on those bombs and knock them far away. You need to knock them into the opposite corner of where you are, where we have that B mark. Knocking them over there ensures that the explosion will not hit all of you. You have a little bit of leeway. They can go about half the arena's distance away and still as long as they're still along that far side and not hit you but it's a very large aoe try your best to get them in that far corner really only one maybe two people need to do that so i just keep my eye open and if i see two people running for it i'm not gonna bother i'm just gonna get in people's way we see boost going off though so back into the circle in the middle then back into the purple So we can trigger Wing Cutter. Now you can see whenever I... Oh, they're not having a good time. They didn't get turned into birds. Whenever I transform into something, I gain a stack of a debuff that you can see. I'm not sure what happens, but the stack itself is mostly harmless. Really, it'll just, if you get enough stacks, do something bad. 
As long as you don't overuse it, though, not a big deal. Your reward, much like previously, is very small pieces of loot, which can be gained and summed up for and changed into gear. But that's it for Midas 1. Until next time, everyone.